Aquaponics is a combination of aquaculture and hydroponics, that is, a combination of fish farming and farming without soil. You can do it on a tiny scale, growing lettuce on top of a fish tank, or a large scale in a state-of-the-art greenhouse. Basically, it uses fish waste to fertilize plants. At the New England Food Show, Trevor Kenkel is displaying his micro farm. People are amazed that you can grow lettuce on top of a fish tank. I started growing with aquaponics about eight years ago, and now uh, I started Springworks uh, about two, two years ago now. Yeah, we're based out of Maine, but uh, right now we're doing a campaign with a Vermont nonprofit to get more of uh, the micro farm systems into schools to teach kids about aquaponics and sustainable agriculture. So that's, that's kind of one of the big pushes uh, our company's doing right now. Yep, exactly. So that's, that's how our farm operates, but um, on a much smaller scale than what we have up in Maine. Uh, we grow in a 7,800 square foot facility uh, for me right now. Aquaponics. Aquaponics. So yeah, so we, um, as opposed to like using chemical fertilizers and stuff, we use just fish waste basically. Um, so it's an organic so system. this box sucks the fish waste from here into here? Yep, exactly. We got the pump, pump it up, and then uh, it drains out the other side continues to clean the water so you never have to do water changes or anything like that. We do add water just like as the tank comes down. But no, 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 no. Yeah. It does it all by itself, exactly, yeah. The Kenkel family, with the help of investors, built an aquaponics greenhouse in Lisbon, Maine. The location is close to Bowdoin College, where Trevor went to school. On the way to the greenhouse, you'll pass some chickens. They do like lettuce scraps. So this is where the plants start out in the system. They're seeded into uh, mostly cocoa coir, which is the shavings off of a coconut husk. So it's a media where they can root out into and then later be transplanted out into the main area of the system once they're large enough. The substrate doesn't actually have any real nutrients uh, attached to it. They're watered with um, water from the system to get their nutrients early on. And then once the roots start to begin to be constrained by the, the trays, they get transplanted out and, and are allowed to grow to a, to a larger size. So this is our worm bin, um, scraps uh, from the harvest that aren't used for our chickens, you know, aren't fit for for human consumption go into here and uh, they're eaten up by the worms to create a product called vermicompost that we can use later uh, in the seeding of the system and it's a very nutrient rich uh, compost that you know allows us to recycle some of the unused parts of the plant back into the system and be more sustainable in that uh, area of our production. So once the plants get large enough in uh, the seedling stage, they're transplanted out into the you know, main area of the greenhouse. Um, and they're transplanted out into what we call stage two, which is a much smaller spacing than our mature spacing, but enough to allow them space to grow, um, to root out into the system. And then once they're large enough, they get transplanted out into the mature stage towards the end of the greenhouse and float back towards us. Um, so we harvest really on one end of the greenhouse, so the you know, product is as fresh as possible because all of the processing is done really within 10 yards of, of where any head is, is harvested. And the system is very space efficient because we're really trying to give the plants what they need uh, space-wise at any given point in their life cycle. So our greenhouse is about 10 times more productive than traditional agriculture uh, because we can kind of change that spacing over time rather than being limited uh, you know, by soil and, and kind of staying in one spot. So the roots just grow right down into the nutrient-rich solution. The whole system moves like a water conveyor belt, and these just float right on top. Uh, the system really gives the plants everything they need, so they don't need to grow as extensive of a root system as a you know traditional soil plant would. Um, so they can grow faster uh, in the system, usually about 15% faster, uh, because they really have access to everything that they need. These won't have roots yet, but if we go oh. down towards the end, you'll see. 
So these will be moved into stage three soon, and you can kind of see the, the root system just starting to develop. Um, and then when they're a little bit bigger, they'll, they'll move into the next stage of growth in their life cycle. And the whole system, because it's contained like this, it uses about 90% less water. So we save about 1.8 million gallons of water a year. That goes all the way down to the end, and then kind of is uh, pushed back to this end of the greenhouse, and all flows into our sump. Yeah, we store water here. Uh, it makes the sump quicker to fill up. Uh, we have one pump that runs the whole system. After that, the water is basically falling from one stage to the next. It comes back up through here after it's pumped. And then it goes through our, our boiler system, uh, which is how we heat the greenhouse during the winter. Uh, we heat the water, for the most part, rather than heating the air, um, which is, is a lot more efficient, a lot more economical and, and sustainable because the water holds a lot of thermal mass so we can stabilize the temperature of the greenhouse using all the water out there. I mean, we have you know, over 20,000 gallons of water in the system that can hold heat and uh, store heat during the day and, and release it at night um, so that we don't have to spend as much energy operating this year round. Yep, this is the water flowing to the troughs. So it'll go underneath uh, and then breaks up into a manifold, splits into five parts and that water all flows through the troughs and comes back to eventually be pumped out again. So at this point, the water is now, it's being pushed into the tanks here, and that's all overflowing. And then it's going to overflow out into the troughs. Those troughs are going to overflow into the sump. Um, so, you know, that one pump, once it gets, the water gets um, to about our height, it's just going to fall through the system until it gets back to the pump again. So this is the first step in the process. Us feeding the fish, the waste from the fish and the nitrates then go throughout our system to fertilize our plants out in the greenhouse. So we use tilapia. Um, they're a tropical fish that actually comes from the Nile. They're very easy to breed in captivity, so they're, they're convenient um, for a farm like us uh, that does a lot of stuff in-house. We have about a thousand fish that they run the system constantly and it takes about nine months to a year before the tilapia are fully grown and um, able to go off to market themselves. Yeah, so this is where all the fish are kept in the system. They're kept in uh, five 1200 gallon tanks and the plumbing of the system is designed to flush waste you know, through the tanks where it eventually is, is filtered. It's where uh, solids are settled out by gravity. It's like a retention tank. The solids are then taken and reprocessed. Uh, of course, the, the nutrient-rich liquid flows out to the troughs and the growing area, uh, and that's what the, the lettuce uses to grow, which in turn cleans the water for the fish, and so that the system runs like a, like a small ecosystem. In a nutshell, aquaponics works like this. Fish waste creates ammonia. Bacteria then turns ammonia into nitrites, and then nitrates. The nitrates feed the plants, and then clean water is returned to the fish tanks. So I started growing with aquaponics about seven years ago, uh, just with a tiny little system in my garage and um, I became interested in it uh, and really in sustainable agriculture because uh, of the effects agriculture was having on ecosystems near me. Um, I grew up in Montana around a lot of, uh, a lot of big ag and um, as a young kid I kind of saw the effects uh, in a local creek near me that agriculture could have with fish loss and, and biodiversity loss. Yep. Okay. Exactly. So we just try to we try to create an optimal nutrient environment. Um, there's a lot uh, between balancing different nutrients and then the levels that they're at. Okay. Um, and it seems that it's like having good soil or something. Like right. when you have the right mix, exactly. you can grow anything there, and it's yeah. it's going to thrive. You know? yeah, exactly. Like with soil, you have to have the right pH balance. Right. 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 Depending on what the particular crop is. Yeah, pH is a big variable for us. Yeah. Because it, it, it determines availability of a lot of different nutrients. 
So if you, your pH is off, it affects the whole, the whole system. This is basically going to measure, instead of the human eye, you know, we can use a spectrophotometer that's going to read at a certain wavelength where its peak should be at and, and check the color in an electronic fashion. We test 11 different water parameters daily to make sure the system is balanced. Really, at this point, gather a lot of data on you know, what, what is optimal for the system. What do we want our ecosystem to look like? We learn more and more every day, but we're slowly refining that knowledge to figure out what is going to make our system the most productive and, and really healthy because our um, system produces very nutrient-dense lettuce. You know, people often remark on the taste uh, compared to traditionally grown product and especially actually it's a hydroponic uh, product. So that's so he's already zeroed the instrument and then uh, you just place it in the spec and read and it'll take two minutes for the reaction to go and then it's going to give us a readout of you know, some There you go. How long does this one take to develop? The magnesium? It's five seconds, or 15 seconds. Oh, well, there you go. It's easy enough. As you can see, we grow different varieties of lettuce. Um, we have green leaf, bib lettuce, red leaf lettuce, baby romaine lettuce. We have love lock on the outside. It's our green leaf lettuce. Baby, baby green romaine. So this is tat soy. It's a, one of our Asian greens that we use in our mix. Baby red romaine, or baby purple romaine. This is bok choy. And then we have our mizuno, which we use in our, in our salad mix. Oh, this is our, our spinner, our salad spinner. So we, we wash and spin all our lettuce before we deliver it. So we wash our lettuce here, and then we have a chill room here. This is where we do all our processing, make our mix, packaging. You can see here, forms of packaging. And so I kind of stumbled upon aquaponics, you know, tried it out in, in my garage, and you know, kept building bigger and bigger systems, which eventually culminated in a, a greenhouse that I built in my backyard. Um, and that system was actually more productive than I anticipated. So uh, I started selling to a local restaurant, um, you know, growing all kinds of different things for them. And that's what really started to get me interested in aquaponics, you know, not just as a way to feed my own family sustainably, but to uh, feed others sustainably uh, and, and really look at it as a business. Um, so I started uh, designing a much larger system. You know, the system that we have now is about 30 times larger than that original greenhouse. Um, and using the principles that I had kind of learned there, uh, applying them on a much larger scale, and um, developing uh, a tight business plan around it. The other side of our business is the microfarm, which kind of takes the concepts that we use uh, here and, and puts them in a system that's on a much um, smaller scale, but, but really operates on a lot of the same principles with, uh, you know, nitrification and mineralization happening in just a, a smaller area. So, it, you know, it goes on top of a 10-gallon aquarium. We uh, have developed a, an educational curriculum that can, we can pair alongside it uh, and really allow people to get familiar with agriculture and with, with a hands-on way of doing science. Uh, in the classroom and, and really in their own home. Springworks still has a farm stand that came with the original farm.
They sell their own lettuce. They also sell eggs from their free-range chickens. Plus eggs and produce from other local farms. I had one last question concerning a power failure. They do have a generator which will run the greenhouse. Springworks has future plans to build a second greenhouse. I wish them good luck.